Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to my channel. We will start our session of class 8 with chapter 1, the best Christmas present in the world. We all love to receive presents, but does the present has to be in materialistic form always? Let us see in this chapter, what is the best Christmas present in the world? In this chapter, there are four main characters, the narrator, Coney McPherson, Jim McPherson and Hans Wolf. This is a story which is set in the background of war. The main theme of the story is war and its aftermath and also world peace and prosperity. As I said, the story is set in the background of war. Till now, the world has witnessed two gruesome world wars. First world war was from July 1914 to November 1918 and second world war was from September 1913 to September 1945. War is always destructive. It never brings happiness to anyone. This is the message this chapter wants to convey. Let us now understand the chapter. I will explain the chapter rather than reading it. The chapter is divided into two time frames. One is the present time where the narrator is and second one is at the time of war. So it starts with narrator spotting a roll top desk. He says that he spotted it in a junk shop. Spotted means he saw or found it. The junk shop was in Bridport. Bridport is a town in England. He spotted a roll top desk. This is a roll top desk. And the man who was selling it, he said that it belonged to 19th century and it is made of oak. The narrator wanted one of one of the roll top desks, but all of them were coming too expensive. And this roll top desk that he spotted in the junk shop, it was in a very bad condition. The roll top was into several pieces and one of the leg of the roll top was clumsily. Clumsily means carelessly mended. There were scotch marks, scotch marks are burn marks all over the roll top desk. But it was going for very little money. That means the narrator, the seller was selling it in a very little money. So the narrator thought that he can restore it. Restore here means repair. So he thought he can repair it. And it would be a risk, a challenge. But the narrator thought he would take that challenge. And he paid the man the money and bought it to his workroom at the back of the garage. And he, he started working on it on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is the evening of 24th December, the, day, the, the evening before Christmas. The narrator brought it. He removed the roll top completely and he pulled out all the drawers. The veneer had lifted from almost everywhere. Veneer is the uh, top covering uh, of plastic or decorative wood uh, on the furniture, which is not of very good quality wood. So the veneer wall had left from everywhere on the roll top desk. It looked like water damage to the narrator. That means both water and fire had taken their toll on this desk. That means taken their toll means damage the desk. The narrator opened all the drawer but the last drawer was stuck fast. That means it was shut tight and the, the narrator tried to uh, gently open it but he couldn't. Then at last he had to apply brute force that means using power harshly and he stuck on it sharply from the sides with his face, fist and the drawer open in front of him. There was a shallow space underneath a secret door. Shallow means which is not very deep and there was something in there. There was something in that drawer. The narrator reached out to take out a small tin box which was cello taped on the top. So there was a tin box in the secret drawer and there was a cello tape on the top of it and there was a piece of lined note paper on it and it was written on that note paper in a shaky handwriting. Jim's last letter received January 25, 1915 to be buried with me when the time comes. So this was written on the top of the uh, tin box in a shaky handwriting. What was written? Jim's last letter received January 25, 1915 to be buried with me when the time comes. Now the narrator knew that it was wrong to open someone's box. But curiosity got the better of his scruple. Scruple is the feeling that makes you hesitate to do something wrong. But 
curiosity won over that uh, feeling of scruples as it usually does with the narrator and he opened the box there was an envelope in the box the address was mrs jim macpherson 12 cooper breaches bridport dorset so the narrator took out the letter and unfolded it it was written in pencil and it was dated on the top december 25 1914 we have seen previously that the letter was received on january 25 1915 and it was written on december 26 1914 that means the letter was received almost one month of after writing so this was part 1 in part 2 we will see what was written in the letter so the letter was to a lady named coney it was written by jim macpherson and jim macpherson wrote to coney that he was writing in a very happier frame of mind he was very happy because something wonderful had just happened and that he wanted to tell to coney at once then he said that we all uh, we were all standing to in our trenches that means all the soldiers he is talking about they were standing to that means they were taking up their position in their trenches trenches is a long uh, are long deep ditches which are dug in the ground where soldiers can hide from the enemies he he was talking about yesterday morning that means christmas morning he has written the letter the next day to christmas and he described the morning that it was crisp and quiet and beautiful like a christmas morning it was cold and frosty as well like a christmas morning should be then jim says that he would be uh, he would like to say that they started it but the truth was he was ashamed to say that actually the fritz began it fritz here is a term which is used for german soldier because fritz is a common german name so uh, the so jim macpherson wants to say that i want to say that we started it but i am ashamed to say that actually the fritz started it and first someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite so these german soldiers and british soldiers they were face to face each other they were opposite to each other and the fritz that means the german soldier they started it jim macpherson belongs to the british part he is a british soldier and then somebody uh, saw a white flag waving and white color as you know is a uh, is a symbol of peace so somebody from the german side waved a white flag from the opposite trench that means from the german side and then they were all calling them from across the no man's land no man's land is a piece of land which belong to no one that means it's a place which no country can claim so from there they said happy christmas tommy now tommy again is a common english name name and here it is used to refer to british soldiers so the germans started shouting happy christmas happy christmas and when uh, these british side they got over the surprise some of them also shouted back same to you fritz same to you so they also replied to their wishes and then uh, jim macpherson says that he thought that that would be that that means it would be over there the matter would end there and they all at the british side th- uh, british side thought that it will be over there but suddenly what happened one of them stood up there one of the german soldier who was wearing a gray great coat he stood waving a white flag and then someone shouted from there don't shoot lads boys don't shoot and no one actually shooted then there was another german soldier another fritz who got up uh, on the parapet parapet is a low protective wall which is used for protection by the soldiers and then another so one by one these german sto- soldiers they started getting up keep your heads down i told men it's a trick but it wasn't so jim macpherson told his men to keep their heads down as he thought that it was a trick but it wasn't a trick from german side now one of the german was waving a bottle over his head and he said he was carrying a bottle over his head and he said it's christmas day tommy we have schnapps schnapps is a common german drink made of grains and we have sausages this is sausage it's a meat in cylindrical shape so they said that we have schnapps we have sausages we will meet you and by this time there were dozen of the, the german soldier they were walking towards the british soldier in the no man land and they were not carrying any rifle any gun with them and now from the british side it was little private morris this is name of the soldier 
who stood first so from british side little private morris he stood first and he said come on boys what are you waiting for and then there was no stopping the soldiers jim mcperson said that i was the officer i should have stopped them but then and he was supposed to but the truth is that it never occurred to him to stop them and all along their line the german line and british line they could see men walking slowly towards one another german side's grey coat and british side khaki coat they were meeting in the middle and jim mcperson was also one of them he was also the part of that meeting and the in in the middle of the war these soldiers they were making peace now jim mcperson says that you cannot says his to his wife coney that you cannot imagine my feelings i looked into the eyes when he looked into the eyes of fritz officer who approached him with his hand outstretched and this fritz officer's name was hans wolf and he said gripping jim mcperson's hand warming his hand holding his hand warmly he said i am from dusseldorf i play the cello in the orchestra cello is a musical instrument which is like a large violin so he was actually a musician so you see these soldiers they were not actually soldiers by profession they were something else by profession and they were dragged into this war as soldiers and then hans will wish them happy christmas captain jim mcperson jim mcperson also replied and he also replied happy christmas and he is told that he is a teacher from dorset so jim mcperson was also originally not a soldier he said that he was a teacher from dorset in the west england and then hans will said ah dorset he knew that place very well then they shared their rum their ration and their excellent sausages and then they talked and um, jim said coney you was, would be surprised how did we talk but this hans wolf this person hans wolf he spoke perfect english even though he had never set a foot in dorset and or he had never been to england he had learned all his uh, all this in, uh, english from his school from reading books uh, and his favorite writers were thomas hardy his favorite book was for far from the madding crowd so out there in no man's land these two these two soldiers in the middle of war they were talking about bad sahiba gabriel oak surgeon troy and dorset these are all the places mentioned in the book that hans wolf and jim mcperson were discussing then now uh, he also told that hans wolf also told that he had a wife and a son who was just born 6 months ago and then when jim mcperson looked around he saw huddles of khaki and gray everywhere soldiers were meeting everywhere all over there in no man's land they were smoking they were laughing they were talking they were drinking they were eating and hans wolf and jim mcperson also shared what was left of the wonderful christmas cake and uh, hans wolf thought that the marzipan was the best he had ever tasted marzipan is a sweet covering on the cake that is made from sugar eggs and almonds and Jim Mcperson also agreed, and they agreed about everything. Although they were enemies, and Jim Mcperson said that there was never a Christmas like that. He was very happy with that meeting with the enemy. Then someone uh, that Jim Mcperson doesn't know who bought out the football, and all the grey coats of the Germans they were dumped to make a pile of goal posts. They made a goal post out of their coats. and the next thing they knew that tommy versus fritz that means german versus british a match was happening there in the no man's land a football match hans wolf and uh, jim mcperson also saw their soldiers and they cheered they clapped they stamped their feet to keep away the cold as much as they could by stamping the feet and by clamp, uh, clapping by moving their body they were keep away uh, keeping the cold also away and there was a moment that jim mentioned that their breaths were also mingling in the air and hans wolf also saw and smiled and he said jim mcperson uh, he said after a while that i think this is how we should resolve this war this is how the war should be resolved through a football match because while playing a football match no one dies no children are orphaned and no wives become widow this is what hans wolf said to jim mcperson 
and then jim said that i preferred cricket so you as you know that england or british they are more comfortable with cricket so jim said that i prefer cricket then we tommies would be surely winning he said they both laughed and together they watched the game and sad to say actually fritz won the game that means german germans won the game two goals to one but hans wolf large heartedly generously said that their goal was wider than theirs so it was quite not fair so he accepted that their side of goal was wider now the time come and all uh, the, they felt that the time had come so soon when the game was finished the schnapps and the rum and sausages they were also running out and they both side knew that it is all over christmas is over they wished uh, each other hands and jim wished each other well and they hoped that they would see their family each other uh, each of them will see their family soon when the fighting would end and they could all go home and then jim said that said to connie that this is what said to connie and also to hans wolf that this is what every soldier wants on both side what do, what do every soldier want to end the war and to see their family then hans wolf said take care and he also told that he would never forget this moment nor you both of them will never forget and then he saluted and then they walked away slowly to their trenches unwillingly jim felt that hans wolf turned just once to wave and then they became they got mixed up with the he got mixed up with the gray coated man and then went back to his trenches and that uh, the night back in their dugouts dugouts are a shelter for soldiers like trenches which is made by digging hole in the ground and covering it so they were in their uh, dugouts they could hear, hear christmas carols so the germans were singing christmas carols beautifully it was still in a uh, still nauseous silent night then these british soldiers they also gave them a rising competition by uh, by singing while shepherds watched they both exchanged carols at night and after some time they felt silence and then they had their <clears throat> they had their time of peace and goodwill at a time that jim will treasure throughout his life so they had their time of peace and goodwill in the mid of war that jim mcperson said he will treasure throughout his life and then jim said to coney that uh, by christmas next year this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible dream so you can see uh, you can by by reading this you can imagine the mindset of a soldier who is who is in the middle of war he also feels that the war is terrible and he also feels that the war should get over and then jim says that i know this will happen one day and both of the armies are longing for peace and then he said that we shall be together soon again and he was sure of it so this is what he expect i know from all that happened today how much both armies long for peace so he understood he knew what happened between both the armies the conversation that both the side long for peace so this was jim's letter to coney that the narrator was reading now the third part again now the narrator folded the letter again and he put it carefully back in the envelope he kept awake whole night thinking about it and by morning he knew what he had to do he drove into bridport the address to the place which was written in the letter just of which was a few miles away and he asked a boy who was walking a dog where cooper bridges was and where the house number 12 which was written in the letter the address turned out to be nothing but a burnt out shell burnt out means it was destroyed by fire the roof were gaping and the windows were boarded up that means covered with wooden boards jim uh, the narrator knocked at the next door and asked if anybody knows about mrs mcperson and the neighbor told that yes the there was a old man in sleepers he said that yes he knew coney who is a lovely lady and he told that she is a bit muddle headed muddle headed means confused but at this age now she was very old it is entitled to be to turn confused she was 101 year old at present and she had been in the house she was in the house uh, when the house 
caught fire that means Kony's house caught fire and nobody really knew how the fire had started but they all have ever imagined that it was because of candles because Kony never used electricity she always thought that it was too expensive and the fireman had to got her out just on time and since then she was living in a nursing home in Burlington house on the Dorchester road so this is now the now Kony was living in a nursing house which was on the other side of the town now the narrator went there also he found the nursing home easily uh, they were they were all paper chains all in the hallway it was lighted it was Christmas uh, the next day was the, it was Christmas day when the narrator went to that nursing house and that nursing house was lighted he said there that he was a friend of Mrs. McPerson and she had he had brought a Christmas present for her and uh, the narrator could see through the dining room was that everyone was wearing paper cap and everyone was singing and the matron that means the caretaker she was also a hat she, uh, she also had a hat on and she was very happy to see narrator and she even offered him mince pie and then she walked him along the corridor she told him that Mrs. McPerson is not with the others. Uh, she's rather confused. So they thought it best to give her a rest. And uh, she had no family. She told about McPerson that she had no family and nobody visits him, uh, visits her. So she would be pleased to see the narrator. So uh, the matron took the narrator to the conservatory where uh, Mrs. McPerson was and then she left him. Now the narrator met Kony, who was an old lady who was sitting on the wheelchair. Her hands were folded in her lap and she had silver uh, white hair that was uh, put into a bun. She was gazing out in the garden. The narrator went close to her and she, he said that hello. Uh, and when he said hello, Kony turned and then narrator said, wished her happy Christmas. And then he gave the letter to her saying that I found this and I think it is yours and as the narrator was speaking he could see her eyes never left the narrator's face she was looking continuously at the narrator she opened the tin box the narrator opened the tin box and gave the letter to her and at that very moment Kony's eyes were lit up that means they were becoming bright with happiness and the, she was recognizing the letter. Her face became suffused with a certain glow of happiness. Certain suffused means the happiness spread all over her face. And the narrator explained her about the desk and how he found the letter. But he doesn't think that Kony was at all listening. And for a while, she said nothing. But she just stroked the letter very softly with her fingertips. And suddenly, she reached out to the narrator, took his hand. Her eyes were filled with tears and then she said, you told me you'd come by Christmas dearest, she said, and here you are, the best Christmas present in the world. Come closer, Jim, sit down. So Kony thought that narrator was Jim and she remembered Jim's letter because she had read it and then she said that you promised that you will come home by Christmas. And here you are, you have come home by Christmas. You are, this is the best Christmas present in the world. For, for Kony, Jim's coming to her in Christmas was the best Christmas present. The narrator sat down and Kony kissed his cheek. And uh, the narrator read, I, re re uh, I read your letter so often, Jim, every day. And, uh, Kony told the narrator that considering him as Jim that I read your letter every day and I wanted to hear your voice in my head. It has always made her made her feel Jim with him. And now you are here, she said. Now you are back. You can read the letter yourself. Would it would you do for uh, do it for me? I just want to hear your voice again. This is what Kony said to narrator whom she was thinking is Jim. And then Jim said, I, uh, then she said, I'd love you so much. And then perhaps she said she will make some tea. I'll make you some nice Christmas cake, marzipan all around. I know how much you love marzipan. 
that means koni remembered every time he sp she spent with jim she remembered the letter the only thing is she couldn't recognize that the person was actually not jim it was the narrator so for koni jim mac person coming to her on christmas was the best christmas present in the world the writer the chapter is written by michael mafurgo so i hope understand uh, students you have understood the chapter you have liked the chapter if you have any query any doubt you can just comment and let me know thank you for listening to the chapter bye bye take care